a wife through her desires can push a man to be a man. Mm. Like through the desires that she has in her heart. Yeah. Because it's a holy desire for a woman to want a house that she can make a home. That's right. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Sonia and I want to tell you about a life changing opportunity. For four years, Sonia and I worked with an amazing organization called Apartment Life. We served as coordinators with this organization and were placed in an apartment community in Nashville, Tennessee, where we hosted events, cared for the residents, and we welcomed new guests. Yeah, so for four years, we hosted two events per month, mm -hmm. and we loved it. It was so fun, and we gained community while we were caring for that community, and we even met our best friends there. Yes, we did. One of the amazing things about apartment life is that when you're placed in a community, you get greatly, and I mean greatly, discounted rent. So Apartment Life is looking for new coordinators right now all across the United States. They literally have programs in all 50 states. So if you're someone who's interested in this, if you're an individual or you're a couple like Sonia and I are, uh, you have the opportunity to apply to be a part of Apartment Life. Just go to apartmentlife.org slash Brian and Sonia or go to the link in our description box. Welcome to the Growing with the Nearest podcast presented by Family Made Media. We are the Nears and we're on a journey to learn and grow with you in the areas of faith, purpose, and relationships. Sonia, how are you doing? I am well. Good. You I look would, good. Thank you. Absolutely. Makeup covers the dark circles from not sleeping for four weeks. Absolutely. We'll definitely have an episode where we <laughs> update everyone on uh, our parenting journey yes. right now. Yes. But today we're going to talk about something really fun and exciting and a dream come true, as a matter of fact. It's a dream come true. That's happening in our lives. Woo! So we are... Drum roll, please. <laughs> we're building a house. Woo, we're building a house. <laughs> and it's been a journey. Yes, it um, has. The area that we live, the housing market since we moved here has been insane. And oh, it's, it's been only insane. gotten more and more crazy by the day. Yeah. You know, we've lived here for five years. Yeah. We moved um, here in 2018. And it was insane then. And to think what it was then, it was like actually it wasn't that bad. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but so, Lord knows we couldn't have afforded a house back then. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, just because of the housing market, it's taken a long time for us to get a house. Yeah. And, and I think life circumstances as well, which we can get into as well. Yeah. At some sure. point in this so, conversation. I mean, we could talk about it. Yeah. So why, why has it been a journey? Like, why has it been a journey for the Nira family mm. to acquire a home? Yeah. And one of the things that I guess I asked you a question, but I'm just going to go to answer it. Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, we, got a we got a long time, and so feel free to take your time on this. Okay. Yeah. Um. So we joke all the time, and sometimes we would, we would like, jokingly laugh when we really want to cry because where we're from, Kansas and Oklahoma. Oh yeah. What you can what you could get for like a really boo-boo house in our current market in our state and city. Yeah. You can have like an an estate. A mansion. Where we're from. A mansion. <laughs> Literally. And a mansion. so it's it's been a hard process for us. But just to get us into the proper mind frame, I feel like the Lord has strategically put families and mentors around yeah. us to help us acquire a home in our city yeah and so yeah i would say it the reason you said there were some circumstances yeah and do you want to talk about those yeah um i mean just to kind of give like an opening statement for me you know as it pertains to home ownership like i lived in i lived in one house like my whole life you know what i mean and sorry i'm adjusting this because it keeps on There we go. I'm so sorry about that. We don't even have to cut that faith. <laughs> but um, <laughs> for me, there was like a mental blockage in my mind for owning a home. Oh, we're going there. Yeah, we're going to go there. Okay. You're going to go there. Because I want us to get into the nitty gritty of okay. this. Because I thoughts. think that 
I don't think that I'm the only person who has oh, like no, a mental blockage sure. in their mind Not. of like owning a home and what it takes to own a home. You know, my family, like, you know, by the grace of God, we grew up in a very small, like 15, 1300, 13, 1400 square foot house. Yeah. And it was the most peaceful home yeah. in the world. But it was like the only one that it's, it was the only one that we lived in my whole life. Yeah. And so for me, uh, I was like 10 or 11 when that happened. Yeah. And so growing you were up 10, as an adult. You were 10 or 11 when you moved into that new house. When I when we moved into I was in and fourth you, grade. So before you were, so up until fourth grade, where were you living? We lived in apartments. Yeah, we lived in apartments, a number of apartments. And how many uh, siblings do you have? I have four siblings. I know all this information. I'm yeah. just... I have four <laughs> siblings. And so there was just like a mental blockage. I thought yeah. it was like the hardest thing in the world to own a home. And we know that owning a home is, buying a home is not an yeah, easy thing. not a simple thing feat, for By sure. any means. But just growing up, I had an expectation that it was just going to be hard. And that it may not happen until I'm 35, 40 years old. Really? Yeah, I had an expectation like, Oh, this is going to take a long and you thought, time. And you literally thought in your mind, like, 35, 40. Yeah. I was wow. like, you know, I could very well be 35 or 40 years old. Wow. When, like, when I owned my first home. Oh, thank God he delivered us. I know, for <laughs> real. But, I mean, so, uh, like, at first, like, in, in our relationship, I was like, you know, I'm cool to live in apartments for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Especially because I hadn't, when we first got married, I had never lived on my own before. And so, you know, for me, it but, was just a... okay. Yeah. But you were a bum, though. No, I mean, I mean, yeah. I was very purposeful. I was yeah. traveling. I mean, in so Zimbabwean with my culture, it's in, like in most cultures. Yeah. Okay, but also yeah. in your family culture, it's yeah. completely appropriate for the men to live with the parents until they get married, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So when we got married, and like you started talking about like home ownership. And like wanted to have a home. I was like, hold up, hey, <laughs> hey, we got about ten years until we're until we're gonna be ready for that the conversation. The queen has spoken. Yeah, for real. Well, I like, need out of this apartment. I was like, <laughs> but we've. Why is we've she having these blessed. conversations with me? <laughs> really? At first, I was like, okay, this is way too early to be talking about oh, homes. No, <laughs> no, we are blessed because yeah. we lived in a dream apartment. Yeah, we but lived I mean, in a dream we apartment. didn't start living in a dream apartment. No, we lived in a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> we literally lived a in a dungeon, dungeon and, and it was decrepit and sad. <laughs> it was not. I mean, it had a good view. But it didn't have lights. Like, it, it did, literally it, it, didn't it have lights. lights. It did it. It did it. No, oh but it was. Um, so when we first moved, I was like, I mean, I was content to live in an apartment. And then obviously, you know, apartment life came up for us. Yeah. And then we were placed in a really, really, really beautiful Apartment, yeah. we had a downtown co- Nashville. Yeah. We worked for a ministry, and one of the things we did for that ministry is we would serve uh, our client, who was the apartment community, and we would host events, professional events for yeah. the community. So we were placed in this like beautiful, oh yeah, downtown, like four thousand dollar a month, yeah, apartment. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm gorgeous. cool here. You know, we could chill here for a while. <laughs> I well, this helps me because. <laughs> Okay, fourth grade Brian, that's always, that literally was raised partially in apartments. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Why you would be like, oh, we're chilling. This is like the best. Oh, this is a beautiful apartment, downtown Nashville. You know, all the amenities in the world, beautiful neighborhood, like probably one of the most desired neighborhoods in Nashville. Yeah, because we like, tried to buy a home there. I'm like, <laughs> it's just crazy. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you. And no, but I'm th- glad we didn't. Self, I wouldn't have This is probably self disclosure. But you know how they said, like, it was like a two-year commitment for apartment life? Yeah. I was like, oh, no, I'm staying here longer. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was like, oh, out no, so- I'm, uh, I'm, I'm staying here longer. I'm staying here longer. I'm lo- finding out so much. <laughs> but also, you know, but I mean, also at that time, our income, like, I mean, we very, had very little income. So yeah. it was it was a blessing from the Lord. The Lord um, was having me for real. Yeah. And when we first came to Nashville... Like I had just closed my business yep. with my sister and we had like a beautiful boutique and it was very glamorous and fun. Yeah. And then, well, it was fun, but it was hard. It was very hard. So that like right when we moved to Nashville, that closed. Mm. And then I, I, the Lord started having me substitute teach and that was so hard. 
Yeah. And I literally applied to so many jobs and like could not get hired anywhere. Mm. And I was like, someone hire me. I'm not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the Lord literally had placed me there and I was on an assignment there. Yeah. Without um, a doubt. And substitute teachers make nada. Teachers don't make anything. Substitute teachers definitely don't make anything. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, and then you were you were just yeah, just doing the music and doing music. Yeah. Um, it's not that it's not that you weren't didn't have a good income. It's just that we were now living in a very in a place that was very expensive to live. Yeah. And, and also, you know, the season that we're in, you know, we we're investing a lot into the business. So I wasn't making a lot of income practically close to nothing <laughs> <laughs> every day, except and every then, now and then during that time. <laughs> and then this guy takes me on our one year anniversary to Mexico. I get pregnant. <laughs> and oh, 2020 yeah. happens. Well, I, and then hold everything on. We're, closes we're down. Out. We're going. We're no, jumping ahead. No, because we don't have time. We we, just we gotta, do. We, we got gotta a lot scoot. of time, actually. We, no, have we got a lot of time. To the we have end. A, we got. We got to go time. to the joyful part. We got to get there, but we got to get okay. through the. We got to get through the layers. Because what I was gonna say is, in that apartment, we were content. And then I really just wanted to say this. Then we started having babies, mm-hmm. and everything yeah. changed. Yep. So tell us about what happened. Well, I was eight months pregnant, Mm -hmm. eight months pregnant. Yes, yes. And that's when 2020 happened and the world shut down. Yeah. And all of Brian's, like, he he traveled for events, Mm. you know, to sing at events. And so, obviously, there was no gatherings, period, you know, at the height of the lockdown. And I remember going into our our spare bedroom where the nursery was going to be. And it was empty. And I mean, literally empty. Yeah. And I was like, I cried and I was like, Lord, how I don't have anything. And my baby shower got canceled. So my baby shower got canceled. So we were like, really as many parents do, they're like waiting to get stuff once they know what, you know, people gift them at their baby shower. And so I was just like, Lord, I'm going to give birth in a month. Yeah. And I don't have, there's nothing for the baby, like literally nothing. Yeah. And praise God, the Lord supernaturally provided, supernaturally provided. Yeah. That that was the season the Lord taught us about daily bread. Every morning we would pray and we would, the Lord would say, do you trust me today for the daily bread? Yes. Like, do you, do you believe you're going to eat today? We're like, yeah, obviously. Yes. Do you believe that you're going to have clothing? Yes. Do you believe you're going to have shelter? Yes. So it was like we were like every day we were trusting God for daily bread. And the Lord supernaturally provided everything for that room. Yes. Um, And he just tr- he just l- literally taught us how to trust him yeah. for increase. And if you honestly, if you looked at probably our income <laughs> over the course of believing God for a house, especially yeah. in our market, it's supernatural. Oh, it's easily. literally supernatural. Easily. Like, it was actually hard to get a loan because our income was changing so much. Yes. Like we would have to, our income would increase and then we would have to like verify that by like so many paychecks, right? And then it would increase again because we were believing God for a certain amount of house. Yeah. Because what we could afford was like really discouraging <laughs> when you would like, we would go and look at houses. <laughs> Yeah. And be so discouraged. Yeah. And I remember one night, do you remember the first time we really started looking at houses? Like we formally went and looked at houses. Cause I don't we remember were, the specific We day. were looking at houses and like by faith, right? I like took you to like almost a million dollar house. And I was like, I was like, I'm believing God for this. Do you remember that? I don't remember the specific house. This is the house. one that Which Kirk, house was it? That's what the Kirk one that Kirk, Kirk, yep. Kirk, Kirk took took us to so we were like i drive by it every day this was like our process we went to showings by faith and then the next process was we actually literally started looking at showings based off of like our income and so the by faith section was really fun yeah (laughs) and then when we actually looked at showings for like what was our price point yeah do you remember that one house we went to with the grandma carpet oh yeah and it was like at the tippy top of our budget it was horrible (laughs) it was absolutely positively (laughs) terrible and literally literally that night we like do you remember we were like laughing in bed oh yeah like 
I never want to do that again. Oh, yeah. And we were like, we're done. Like, we're oh, yeah. not going like, to look anymore. Nah, don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> we literally just decided we're just not going to look anymore. Yes. Because we're just going to trust God for more income. Yeah. I want to back up because. Back for up me, to what stage? I want to back up to when I began to believe. Oh, yeah. I want to back up when I to when I began to believe that, like, okay, this is possible. Mm. Like, we, owning a home is a possibility. Okay. Um, we started going to Legacy, to Legacy Nashville, just a couple weeks after we got to Nashville. Yeah. And then we started surrounding which is our ourselves, church. which is our church. Yeah. And we started surrounding ourselves with like people who owned homes. Oh yeah. And they started talking and using like verbiage and language of home ownership, and. So we were freshly wishing, married. At we this were fr- point. we were freshly married. Yeah. yeah, and this was probably six seven months where it like started the uptick of like people having conversations about owning homes and yeah. then about refinancing. And I remember every time somebody would be like talk about oh, I'm refinancing my home, I was like, what are they talking about? Like I had no clue any of this. So there was like so much ignorance in my mind towards mm-hmm. the home ownership process, and so. Um, as slowly but surely our friends, more and more friends started buying houses. And like they were our age and they were like, you know, pretty much like kind of the same income bracket. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this possible? Like, is this possible for us to actually in this season of our lives be able to own a home? And then at the simultaneously, like, you know, you're you were the desire for a home was getting was increasing and increasing and increasing. And we had Zayden and then Zeke was on the way. Mm-hmm. And then Zeke was getting me on the way. And at that point, like we're growing out of our apartment and I'm like, Lord, what in the world are we going to do next? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> are we just going to get into another apartment? Like there's not a, an apartment that's big enough for two boys. Like, and Zayden's running around, bouncing against the wall. Like, there would be literally be moments Our where he's Our apartment just, wasn't big enough for just Zayden. Yeah. Let alone another little. Another little bit. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, through that whole process, it, like, my internal battle is like, okay, Lord, I don't have the finances. You think I was pressing you? I don't think you, you in a good way. Okay. Like, I feel like, and I think that this is what a wife can do to a man. A wife, through her desires, can push a man to be a man. Hmm. Like through the desires that she has in her heart. Yeah. Because it's a holy desire for a woman to want a house that she can make a home. That's right. Amen. You know what I mean? Yes. And so, and it's up to the man <laughs> to be able to provide the means to be able to get into that place. Now, yes. I mean, a woman can make her money and she can, it, uh, you know, but I think yeah. it's incumbent upon the man to be able to provide a house for his wife to make a home. Yeah. You know I what I'm saying? I think that's holy. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's special and yes, I received yeah. it. So you weren't you weren't <laughs> pressing me in a bad way. It was actually I think you were pressing me in a holy way. Then I met Kirk. He's a smart man. And then Kirk is like, you know, Kirk is one of those dudes who can learn anything. So like he can learn business, he can learn real estate, he can learn and all he's the things. very smart. And so very entrepreneurial. During 2020, like Kirk buys a house. Like just buys a house. And a beautiful home. A beautiful home. For and his I'm wife. I'm like, hold up, hold Hallelujah. up, hold up. And this is like one of our best friends. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> is this possible? <laughs> is this possible? And, you know, Kirk then begins to like go on a journey with me to learn the possibilities of yeah. owning a home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I remember like he sent me a whole packet that he had created on like, you know, home loans you can get and all these different things. Do you mean and to tell me that? In this process, you feel like you got delivered? I, without, I mean, I think I got the, del- well, I think, you know, deliverance is an aspect, but even more, I was, the eye, the eyes of my heart were enlightened. Mm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And like the ignorant places of my mind were, were informed but and were educated. But you know what's educated. so interesting is that I don't, I just don't experience, you all. like so much of this is genuinely new information for me yeah um you just don't present yourself as a person that like 
like there's lack in your like the, uh, there's not a lack of mindset there's not a poverty mindset yeah so it's interesting because like we've traveled all over you've taken me all over the world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so you've always wanted to present your family with these crazy beautiful experiences we have to eat the best food you know it's like if i want something you do your best to give it to me so it's like provide it for me and i like that phrase better so give it to me sounds weird yes so <laughs> clarification um so it's just interesting that this one area of your life it was just like such a, a like mental block without a doubt so praise it was god a, it was a huge mental block and thank god for kirk and and people that the lord uses as conduits mm. of discipleship enlightenment and deliverance without a doubt and i think that's how i honestly i think that's how god like will deliver us from mindsets oftentimes yeah. is that he'll mm. expose us to people who don't have that don't have yeah. your mindset yeah. who can help you see it yeah. see it a new way yeah absolutely. and so then kirk like when once kirk started to once kirk started to come alongside me in this journey not only that hold me accountable mm -hmm. like continually asking me hey man how's your home on home church going and you know during that time he became a realtor yeah so, so he, he would take like, us to yeah. he would take us to showings yeah. and we would go to different showings of houses that we want houses that we knew were clearly out of our budget um but and he you kept, know what praise yeah. god thank god for friends mm. that will trust god with you Without because a doubt. he knew our financial, he knew he knew bits and pieces of our financial situation. Yeah, and he, he knew most of it. Yeah, he knew that we couldn't afford some of those houses. Yeah, he would still take us, and then he would talk to us practically about how we could get there. Yes, and right because I'm like, no, God's gonna supernaturally provide. Yeah, you know, and he was like, yes, and start this process and start this process. Yeah, and we need people because faith without works is dead. It is right? 1,000%. And so we needed to do something. Scripture says the Lord blesses the work of our hands. So we needed yeah. to do something. Yeah. And I want to just applaud my husband because he he has worked so hard on the practical side mm. to get our family at home. Like applications, meeting with loan people, meeting like getting our finances to like document. Like there's so much. Like, it's very extensive what you have done. Yeah. And you've done such a great job. Can we talk a little bit about that? Um, In just a moment. Okay. I would love to just say. Yes. I feel like it's not that you weren't leading us in faith as a family, but I yeah. feel like you led us practically with our finances to get us there. Mm -hmm. Like stewarding our finances. Is that what I mean? That's what I mean. Not just like bringing in more income. Like you were sitting down every month, going over every single transaction that we had, designating it, showing like, showing, you know, loan. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, don't I want to talk about our first loan meeting. But I have one more thing to say. Okay, cool. Okay. After, I want to talk about, do you remember, do you remember, uh, tr uh, I'm not gonna say the, the name of the actual mortgage place, but do you remember when that we took Zeke, Zeke, Zeke and Zay? <laughs> we gotta tell that story. It was the <laughs> worst experience. <laughs> we had the what we you were got, like the you, biggest hot mess oh, in the world. The but hot hold on, hold mess on. Is like weird people. You tell a story about like loan officers tell a story about, but finish your point and then go. And then I want you. I want yeah, you to all tell I was that. gonna say is I just felt like you carried us practically, uh, like setting us up ourselves up to get a home loan yeah and then i feel like i led us in this area of like really believing god because yeah. i would like look at homes for hours like yes. hours 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 yeah she week. did a great job and being like we area. can do this like we yeah. can do this i would just like show you my phone what about this and you're like oh that's nice yeah i'd be like <laughs> it's like look at this girl that's you nice. know you know we can't afford that girl why are you showing me that get, get that out of my face <laughs> But, but you know time. what's interesting is that because of this mental block, this is the only area that he would ever think that way to me. Because if I were to show him like this really extravagant vacation, he'd be like, oh, yeah, we can make that work. Yeah. You know, so it's cool to hear like the, you know, your process with the Lord to overcome something for your family. And the fact of the matter is we are building a house. Yes. Like, let's just jump to the end. It's like, we're building a house. We're not yes. just like getting some rink in it. We're getting one of the nicest houses that's available in Nashville. It's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. Without a doubt. So we can jump back to. Yeah. It was a horrific experience. Yeah. And I actually don't want to think about it. <laughs> I blocked it I from do. my memory. I, I, I actually love thinking about it because I, don't. I, I was think about horrible. how far we've come. 
But we yeah. had just gotten a raise, like at the we had just gotten a raise at the beginning of the year. And so we we're like, oh yeah, it's time. We're about to buy a house right now. We're about to walk up into this loan office and they're about to give us as much money as we want. <laughs> And I remember we walked into the like, and we had to take Zayden with us. Zeke was a little baby. Yeah, Zeke was a little baby. And I mean, as soon as we walked into that <laughs> loan officer's house, when I tell the you, office, Z- yeah, the loan officers, office. they say house, the office. Yeah. Zay Zay begins to act a <laughs> No, he fool. was chill. He was, like, he was so cute he and began, chill. Not only that, he pooped his <laughs> pants as we're walking in. So it stinks like the... <laughs> it stinks in this little loan officer's room. And so, well, and ever since I had COVID, my smell's not the best. Yeah. And so I really couldn't notice as much. But Brian was like... He was like... Oh, my gosh. He was like... Boots. And I was like, he did? And, Z- and he's trying to wake Zeke up. Like, Zeke's like, well, not even that old. Was Zeke even born? <laughs> yes. He just was quiet. We just don't remember him because he was chilling. No, he was asleep. And then Zayden was being, yeah, I think being he was a little bit rambunctious. And so he woke him up during the meeting. And Zayden was, she was like trying to offer him coloring. Oh my God. You know like how people are. People, when people feel bad for you. Like, Sometimes you could just, just tell be like, she just felt leave bad. I, I'm just, just, can you just try to ignore him? <laughs> Try, please. And so I really do want to tell people, like, please just ignore him. Yeah, just ignore him. him You can't say it out loud because it sounds too mean. But uh, but you know, she took us through the numbers, and woo boy, did I leave discouraged, (laughs) discouraged. She was like, "You need to do this, 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 this." No, do you remember what she asked us? It was so insulting. She was being sweet though. She was being sweet, but she was like, "Is there any any family members (laughs) you can borrow money?" Yeah. We're like, no, 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 for real. But it was, you know, it was, but you know, we needed those experiences to like get us in the mindset of what it's going to take to be able to, to accomplish the goal that the goal that we have. And I just want to say the way we're phrasing it, it makes it seem like we were just so broke. It's not the case. The, The housing market that we live in is just an absurd, like, just absurd. So, like, an yeah. average family has to live sign- an hour outside of the city plus to be able to afford a decent space, like, just a general basic space. Yes. So we're not we're not poor, but it's just, like, when you have to pay 20% down on a well over a half a million dollar house, even a million dollar house. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a significant amount of cash. And yeah. the average American just doesn't have that cash on hand. No. So I just want to paint the picture. We're not broke and we ain't poor and we don't yeah. lack, we didn't have poor stewardship of our finances. It would just the situation with the housing yeah. market. But there were things that we needed to do to like get ourselves in order Absolutely. to be in position. And I, and I think it's really important. Like, People understand that because I think that, you know, it's easy for people to want something, but then not want the process it takes to be able to get that thing, to be able to like apprehend the promise that God has for you. Absolutely. And so that meeting kind of like set in motion, set in motion, like, okay, this is what it's going to take. This is what it's going to take for us to be in the position to be able to do that. And that was, that was actually two years ago. That was, yep. That was 2020. We've been in this process for two years. Was that 2022 or 2021? I I don't know, but I do want to say something that you said was really powerful. Mm. Like it set in motion really practical things for what the Lord wants to give us. And it's like, it's it's so easy and comfortable to be like, I'm just going to name it and claim it. And this thing is just going to show up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the reality is it's like when the Lord promised the promised land to the Israelites, there was such a journey to get there. Without a doubt. And there's supernatural provisions along the way. And that's amazing. But we just have to remember that God does ask us to work. And he does ask us to that's do very right. practical things that can be very challenging practically. But there's without a doubt the hand of God has been upon this process. Without a if doubt. If you would have told me two years ago that we would be able to move into the house we're moving in now. Yeah. I, I The only way I thought rationally it was going to be possible if somebody gifted it to us. Yeah. 
right? Yes. And that's not where I put my faith. I don't no, put my faith in just like, not. oh, I'm just going to get something free. I don't put my faith there. Yeah. But I do put my faith in supernatural blessing. Yeah. And so I was just like, Lord, I don't know how you're doing this, but I'm going to believe you're going to do it. Yeah. And it's just so cool to see him provide for real. Yeah. Like so cool, Brian. Like we are this is oh, a yeah. this a is a supernatural miracle. Yeah. Us owning a home is an actual miracle. Yeah. And I, I can't wait to get to that part. Simultaneously, as we were looking at that one loan, we're going through another loan process. Yep. Through a company. Uh I don't mind naming them. I don't want to plug them. You don't? <laughs> I don't mind. And we, we won't now that Sonia's reacting like that, we won't say it there. But it was a it was a, 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 a we're in a home loan process that like has a lot of great benefits. And like through that process, man, like the scrutiny that we've had to go through over our finances has been yep. like so great. But that too has also like put us in a position to be able to be ready to own a home. So like at the end of 2022 is when I feel like our because we knew that because we are still living in the apartment downtown and we knew we're transitioning out. Like, yeah. there's no way that we're staying in here. We are getting yeah. out of here yeah, with yep. our house. I mean, it's just not feasible anymore. So like that's when our our um, our home search really started Escalating. to ramp up yeah. like in like October, November of 2022. And I remember like we will be looking at homes all the time having conversations about could this work could this work could this work could this work while still like really preparing ourselves to be in a position and then i remember one night one night you showed me you're like hey you you posed this question you're like hey what if we were to do a new build and i was like in my mind i was like mm, that sounds that sounds complicated you better get yourself a helpmate you do you need a helpmate you know you know and, and i'm just i'm just i'm being honest about these thoughts that i had i was like that sounds complicated but i mean i'm looking at these dumps that we're looking at that are costing <laughs> half a million dollars well and, that's and what I, i'm like anything at this point no, like literally dumps. we were gonna spend the top of our budget and then have to put 50 to 100 thousand dollars into, into the it house just to be livable and it still wouldn't Sheesh. be what we would desire it to be. Well, like exactly. our standard is just so high. Like, let me just tell you like, Ryan's standard, mm, okay? The smell of old home makes me vomit. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not like, when I walk into an old home, that's like, okay, how many people died in here? How many people died? <laughs> like, you, you can put... smell the stench. <laughs> like, you can smell the stench of, like, of death. <laughs> In the in the places like it's like you know what I'm no, talking about I'm when you smell right. the, the, the floors are like like you look at the, the no. floors you just like Ugh. like what is under that I can't Brian do it. gets a little bit snobby I won't lie because I can't do it because we I couldn't do it we live right now while our home is being built in an older home in the moment saw it, we walk in saw it. we're cutting that from the podcast we're cutting that the we cannot we show walk that in, he starts spraying. For free. <laughs> Son, you cannot, you can't, what? We're cutting that part. We're cutting that part. But anyways, I just, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And people will identify, make a comment if you, you know, identify with like old home smell. It's like the Sorry. smell of, I shouldn't even say what I was about to say. You should stop. No, you I need should to stop. stop because old I home. Stop. I'll tell, and like, this is, this is, stop. this is the thing. But then tag it. Babe, to add all of insult, our family members live in old homes. Like have, you need to, to just add chill. In, I'm talking about like 60, 70 year old homes. Okay. Not like 20, 30. <laughs> but I'm talking about like, dang, I can't even remember. The Holy Spirit took it away. <laughs> he said, Jesus. you don't need to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You what know. were we talking about though? But we were talking about the fact that like, oh, to add, oh, this is what I was going to say. To oh. add insult to injury, Whew. a dump that's old. That's half a million dollars. <laughs> to me, I was like, we were God, just insulted to the deepest God, part of I, ourselves. I was insulted every time I went to a show. I was, I was like, my my personal <laughs> no, pride. No, this is was, what I was gonna say. This is Jesus how bougie Brian is Spirit. for real. Thank you, Holy because Spirit. Because when we started me. looking for apartments, uh, like when we were looking to move to the city, we like mapped up all the apartments we wanted to look at, and then we came here before we moved, and then we went and looked at all the apartments. We would spend like 20 minutes, 20 to maybe an hour going to an apartment just to look at it. 
because we were going to apartments all day. If the curb appeal, and the curb appeal wasn't bad in any one, any one of them. But if the curb appeal wasn't to Brian's standard, I'm telling you, this man would roll in and roll right out. Right he back wouldn't out. even let me get out. I would just circle. And I'd be like, Brian, we just traveled. Like, this is a 40 minute like situation. I couldn't have my family stay there. <laughs> I Which couldn't. I appreciate. I appreciate so much. So, okay, so go back to me bringing up to you, hey, what about a new build? So because you said what we could buy to renovate for 100K. We could also have a we could buy build a, a new, new home. Build a new home. And and that was something that we hadn't looked at before. And it was a unique unique circumstance. Yes. Because just because the Lord just supernaturally provided it. Yeah. Again, so Sonia comes up with that like the idea of okay, let's go look at some new builds and see if this is a possibility. And I remember the first new build we went we went to look at. Was it was it the one that we're it's the one that we're it's the it's the good on, all homes. Come on. And so I remember we went and looked, and I was like, hmm, okay, this is, again, this is a possibility. And, like, Sonia in the whole process was like, was like, I'm okay with renovating a house. I'm okay with renovating a house. And I was I like, love renovations. Jesus, I do not <laughs> want to renovate a house. That's I like love design. I love interior design. Yes. I love because I actually used to work for hard labor. I was a hard laborer. So I used to work for yeah. a contractor. Yeah. And so I would like do tile work and hard. I would do like floors and like I, there were so many things like so dependent on the job. And so I love the process of something looking so grungy and being transformed. Like it's just so exhilarating to me. So I was super stoked about doing a renovation. Yeah. But I wasn't stoked on like the renovation circumstances, you know, because it's like it still wouldn't have been up to par. It uh, would have been up to par. Put yeah. hundred thousand dollars because the neighborhoods wouldn't have been like the best. It's just like, no. Yeah. And so the new build gave me it was so exhilarating for me. And I literally yeah. texted you the other day. I was like, Brian, this is a dream. Come dream true. come true. This is a dream come true because I got to go to a design studio. Yep. Pick out like the different. Like, I got to pick out everything. I got to pick out the color of the floor, color of the carpet, the color of the walls, the color of what kind of backsplash, what kind of um, countertops, like, what kind of cabinets. Like, that was so fun. It yeah. was so fun. Yeah, without a doubt. It was so much fun. I had so much fun with you on those, yeah. like, design studio appointments. We got to pick the layout. We yeah. got to pick the outside siding. We, it was like, that was just the coolest thing ever and i think we're gonna have the dopest yeah. looking house ever and i'm Can so I, excited do you mind if i back up one more time yep i want to back up to when we initiated it okay mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so we go to christmas christmas is amazing and we're Whoa. like we're like on the fence we were talking with the realtor who was helping us in this process with them he's texting us back and forth like hey are you guys dope thinking negotiator, you want it negotiator praise yeah. god do you guys think you want this? What are you thinking about it? And I'm just like, ah, we're just not quite ready. And so we're just chilling, not really doing anything as it pertains to homes, looking at different ho other We were other like 98% ready to like seriously like talk to, you know, talk to them about owning. Exactly. Yep. And so um, you fasted. At the beginning of January, you know, we fast every year. Yep. We fast every year. At the beginning of January, I remember we were in a staff chapel, and I had been waiting to hear about like pre approvals and whatnot for our um, pre approvals and whatnot for our, our mortgage. And I hadn't heard from the mortgage lender in like three weeks, something like that, something like three weeks. And I was like, God, what is going on? One day I was sitting uh, in local in Staff Chapel. We were yep. in Staff Chapel, and yep. like Pastor was like, "Hey, I want you to pray for somebody else." Yeah. And so I had um, I was praying for one of my friends, Brian mm -hmm. Brian Eggers. Mm -hmm. And as I was praying for him, I remember I had my hands on his back. As I was praying for him, I heard the Lord say, "Go forth." Yep. Go forth. Yep. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. Yep. It was the good all homes. Yeah, it was to build, to have a new build. Exactly. <laughs> and so I remember I went, I had a haircut appointment after that. 
And I was on my way. I was driving to the haircut appointment. And the Holy Spirit was like, call the mortgage lender. Call the mortgage lender now. So I called the mortgage lender and I was just, hey, I just wanted to call and just like follow up with you and see what was going on and whatnot. I haven't heard from you in a while. And she was like, oh, oh, yeah, you guys are approved. You guys are pre-approved. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we are. Yeah. And, By the end of the day. And I was like, for how much? And she told me, and it was, it was more than what we needed for the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I called you. You said at the end of the day. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, um, Brian had gotten us pre, pre uh, got a pre approval letter, mm. had communicated with our realtor. Can I go back <clears throat> to that? In the process, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So I called you and I remember I said, Hey, we're pre approved. I said, and I feel like the Lord said, Go forth. And I said, do you want to do this? Do you remember that? No? Mm -mm. You don't remember that? Not really, no. I remember it because I was scared. I was like, because if we do this. It was it was locked in my brain. Yeah. I was just ready. I was just waiting for the puzzle pieces to like come yeah. together. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't really. You were afraid. I mean, I was like, hey, if we do this, we're doing it. Yeah. You know, like, there's no turning back. Like, if we initiate this process, you're like, we're in this thing. Praise God. You know what I mean? It and was so, awesome. What, but so, can I, can, so, yes, because we have to like get to the point. Absolutely. So I, so we decided we're moving forward. What's powerful about the Lord saying go forth on that day. Yep. Get on that very day. Yep. They offered us a premium lot for free. Because mm -hmm. there was only one lot left. And they offered us. One lot left. They offer, offered us a beautiful amount of money. To go towards upgrades. Upgrades or closing costs, yeah. Or closing costs for us to sign the contract that day. For us to sign the contract. They said, you got to sign and it. And get this. We meet with them over the weekend to like. <laughs> Three days later. Right. To like, we had a conversation with them and then we had to sign the contract. They When we meet, met with them the second time, because they offered it, we're like, we gave them a verbal acceptance. So they sent over the contract and then we met with them to give them the contract. Before that meeting or during that meeting, they were trying to get us to pick a different lot. Because two lots opened up. Because two lots two were lots that weren't premium lots open up, opened and up. they wanted us to move over there. If we would not have given that verbal commitment that day, yep. we wouldn't have got a premium lot for free, which is thousands and Ooh. thousands and thousands of and dollars. It's beautiful. It is more beautiful than what they were wanting us to move to a few days later. And the Lord supernaturally did that. It is the most beautiful view. We are going to have the most beautiful view for our kids. Yep. As we raise them over the next few years, because I'm already on the next. Like I'm, oh, we're, we're here, yeah. and then I'm already dreaming about like oh, our dream, faith, dream home. My faith is there now. And so, yeah, that was that was like a major testimony. Yes, major testimony. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and we had we had plenty of funds available to be able to do all of the upgrades in the new build. Because you know, when you do a new build with like yeah. a builder that's developing a neighborhood, they're so smart. Honestly, it's so smart. Um, like they have the base you get for like the base price and then they try to upgrade you for all of the things that are very trendy to have, like certain colors or certain uh, finishes, et cetera. Yeah. And we had enough money to do all of our like dream things. Yeah. Not all of them, but most yeah. of them. So that process was so, like once we signed, once we signed the contract with them, put our like earnest deposit down, yeah. then we had the opportunity to like choose like different features for the house like Sonia was talking about. And then we had literally a four hour design meeting where we had the where we went and we picked all of the finishes for our house. That was Sonia's dream. I came in. Sonia, locked. yeah, Sonia came in spreadsheet, so everything ready. And yeah. and now like we're in the process that they broke ground. Yep, broke the frames ground. Frames up. We're gonna be doing some more videos. Um some uh some more videos like doing more in-depth look into the process. Of building our house. We'll yeah. take you behind the scenes at the yep. design meeting. We'll yep. take you out to the property in some of those meetings. So make sure you go yeah. and look at those on, on, on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And so I think the best way we can close out today is we're going to pray. Yes. And I believe that the Lord 
he provides for our basic needs. Yeah. <laughs> and he provides more than our basic needs. But if you need shelter, like if you need a home, like literally, yeah. we if you agree need a you. home, we're going to we agree, agree with, with you, you that the Lord wants to provide a home. Yes. Because he did it for us. He can, he can do, do it, it for you. you. That's right. And so, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, Ooh, I just thank, thank you, you that in Deuteronomy, you promise that yeah. you take care of us. You give us the power to create wealth. That's right. Mm -hmm. You give us the power to create wealth. Yeah. I thank you that you are um, our provider. You are our coverer, that you will lead us and guide us. And so, Lord, I just pray for every person that's in the process of ownership, yes. of home ownership. Yeah. And I pray just that you would bless them, Lord. I pray for those who, like Brian previously, have a mental block towards home ownership. I just pray that you would deliver them right now in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Lord, that they would have a kingdom perspective that yes, the Lord come on, provides come and on. that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And so, Lord, we just pray supernatural deliverance in mental strongholds uh, to receive for families, marriages, and children in the name of Jesus. So, Lord... First of all, we just give you glory and honor for what you've done. And I just pray that our testimony would increase the faith of others to believe you because you are faithful and you're yes, going to you do are. it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Growing with the Nearest podcast presented by Family Made Media. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you leave a review and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching on.